Hi, everyone. Welcome to Benchmark Metals Live Investment Summit today, hosted by SIX. We're joined today by Jim Gray, President and Director, and Malcolm Dorsey, Senior Geologist. Jim and Malcolm are going to take you through a corporate presentation, and then we're going to be accepting questions. As a reminder, you can submit your questions in the Q&A panel in the right-hand side of the screen. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Jim to start things off. Good. Thanks, Shane, for the introduction. Uh, beside me here, I've got Malcolm Del Dorsey. Malcolm is one of our senior geologists, and uh, Malcolm and I actually were just at site most recently, having a review of the core and operations. And uh, I'll introduce uh, Malcolm a bit later through the presentation to go through some of the technical information. So at this point, the uh, opening slide here, you'll see a, a good layout of Benchmark's ground. Uh, we are indeed targeting 5 million ounces. However, you know that's not a near-term uh, target that we're looking at. Uh, the 5 million ounces is a target over um, another drill exploration program. Uh, it's going to take uh, another one to two years to get to that type of total. However, near-term, we are indeed uh, approaching or looking at multi-million ounce gold and silver potential. Uh, just a, a, a quick uh, follow through. Um, the landscape here, we are road accessible at this project, which um, inherently has some exceedingly good ex advantages for costs and getting to site. Uh, it's quite unique for most explorers in North Central British Columbia. Uh, there's not heavy helicopter support required for drill moves. We can actually move the rigs across the landscape. You can see it's uh, nicely undulating tabletop mountains uh, with very little green cover. And you can see that the, the ground is already disturbed from former production. Uh, Forward-looking disclaimer statements, just letting you know we are indeed uh, a venture-listed company and there are inherent uh, risks involved. However, as we move forward here, we hope to de-risk everything and, and fast-track this to a production decision. As noted there, uh, you can see the Golden Horseshoe on the map. We're located in north-central British Columbia. It's a gold-silver project. Uh, road accessible. Part of uh, the nature of our group here is we are called the Metals Group. Um, Benchmark is one of our uh, flagship or senior companies within the group, uh, but there's also a number of others in the stable where we share management and expertise. Uh, Altaplano Metals is another one, Cortis Metals in Nevada, and we have a number of other um, exciting endeavors on the go, which we'll be adding to the uh, group of companies. So quick snapshot here, Lawyers is 100% owned. We're rapidly advancing this to a production decision and by, by rapidly, uh, we'll get into it a bit here, but uh, we did recently announce a $50 million raise that allows us to work very quickly and plan ahead and bridge towards uh, multiple resource estimates over two years, but also a feasibility study in 2022. Uh, we're located in a prolific area of Northern BC. Uh, within that area, there, there's it's a proven and prolific area, of course, but um, the Kames, uh gold copper mine sits nearby to us. <coughs> We're drilling to uh, create and develop a large resource estimate. Uh, we're fully funded for the next two years. We're looking, looking to drill up to 100,000 meters this year uh, by the end of November. Uh, one of the big catalysts for growth here is a new resource estimate in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, that is conceivably five to six months away. And this will be followed very quickly by a preliminary economic assessment in Q2 of next year. Uh, geology, look at this is a, a, a very good uh, gold and silver project uh, with gold and silver 
epithermal, low sulfidation, gold bearing system at surface. Uh, there is potential links here to a deeper porphyry. A quick snapshot of some of the drill intercepts we're seeing. Uh, seven meters of well over 100 grams gold and 900 grams silver. Uh, and then another intercept here uh, that started at surface, 33 meters of near six grams gold and 120 grams silver. Um, so there's some big robust gold, not gold and silver numbers. And we're also looking towards some new discovery targets across the property because it's quite large. Uh, comparables, uh, you know, we, we've leaped far ahead uh, in two years. At one point, we were sitting at an 18 cent stock. Now we're in and around a dollar thirty, dollar forty stock. So in the course of two years, we've generated some some large wealth for investors. And now you can see on that bar graph there, we're chasing several other well-known explorers, and uh, we believe we can meet their market caps in a short time frame. So some of the milestones here was, uh, and corporate object objectives as we work ahead. You know, we're in Q4 of this year as we speak. We have five drill rigs running. Uh, we're looking to drill up to 100,000 meters this year, but that's in addition to two other campaigns that we've completed and some um, a large amount of data historically from the past. As I mentioned, this resource estimate uh, that contains all of the historical information and data and new data will go towards a compliant resource estimate in Q1 of next year. That's just months away. That'll be followed by uh, a preliminary economic assessment uh, in Q2 of next year. But at the same time, we'll be launching uh, a much larger drill pro program. We're looking to drill up to 200,000 meters for next year. And you got to keep in mind, this is funded. We do not need to go to market again to raise capital. Approaching uh, near the end of next year, Q3, Q3 and Q4, we'll continue drilling and field work programs. Um, but all of that data will go towards an updated resource in 2022. And then um, another lofty milestone to complete a feasibility study. And we've already begun permitting, engineering, metallurgy, environmental baseline programs. All of that advanced engineering and permitting needs have begun already. We're, we've begun that work uh, this summer. So the key, look, the key here for any company that's got growth and uh, that you want to invest in, the key is management. And we've got, you know, without uh, tooting our own horn too much, we really believe we've got a strong team with veterans uh, from 25 to 30 years. Uh, we have introduced and, and raised companies that have gone from new discoveries and put them into production scenarios. Uh, that is the key to growth in every company. Um, you know, even if you're looking at future investments across this space, look for management who have been there and done this before. And I suppose that's a good segue to say, you know, look at the metals group, look at our other companies. Uh, we will build these companies along the same path that you see with Benchmark. Uh, our share structure now with that large raise that we just completed, and that included significant contribution from Eric's brought, it was a $50.3 million raise, and it included some significant institutional support. And in general, these institutions do not jump on um, an explorer at, that, at that, this level. Generally, you see institutional support after a large resource has been created. So, you know, we think that these this support has given real credence and uh, shown that this company is is a real viable um, mining scenario going forward. So, currently, we're at uh, about 150 million shares um, outstanding. 
Uh, the working capital is just below 50 million. That's because we have five drill rigs in process and some bills coming in to pay for this large drill, pro pro drill program. Um, in the money warrants here, um, there's about just over $6 million that are in the money right now. So that's additional capital that could come into the company. Uh, in addition to that, there's options that are in the money as well. So the point uh, being here, um, fully diluted with uh, in the money warrants and options, we're sitting at close to $56 million. Um, but because of this raise we just completed, uh, there's potential here to bring in an awful lot of more, a lot more money going forward without having to go back to market. And you can see that in the fully diluted working capital here. So the, really, uh, Benchmark's in a great position. Uh, we are fully funded for the next two years. Uh, but in addition to being fully funded, there is opportunities here to bring in additional capital just through um, options and warrants that are in the money. A snapshot of our, our team here, you know, the, the state's person of our team and chairman is John Williamson. John and I work closely together. Uh, we've worked on a few endeavors, but most recently, John was an original founder and director at Kamenak. And about four or five years ago, Kamenak sold to Gold Corp, their Yukon uh, property called The Coffee Project. And uh, I myself was involved with uh, a number of successful companies. Most recently would be Keegan Resources. At Keegan Resources, we took a 25 cent stock, uh, found a new discovery, raised in excess of $300 million. A new team came in and, and put a mine into production in West Africa. Uh, but along that wealth and growth profile, the stock went from 25 cents uh, to near $9.75 and had a market cap of near uh, $750 million. And so the, the point here, as I go back to management, if you look at the prep pedigree and experience across this whole slide here, we're on the verge of a new mining cycle. And this is truly the catalyst is having this strength and these people to move the company and advance it quickly. Another snapshot here of our uh, of the ground. Uh, you can see the large layout areas there, and you can actually actually see um, a couple of the trucks there. Uh, we're looking to fast track this very quickly to a production decision. Uh, it was a historical producer, so from 1989 to 1992, it produced gold and silver <laughs> over about three and a half years. Uh, it was a high grade producer, um, mining one to seven meter sort of vein systems, uh, mainly through underground. They produced approximately 50,000 ounces a year. The difference in the story this time is we're looking at bulk tonnage potential. This isn't an underground mining scenario anymore. This is open pitable at surface, uh, lower capex to production, and a faster, um, faster movement to get to production with an open pitable scenario. Uh, there is several permitted facilities uh, within our area. There's a smaller Baker mill that's fully permitted. It's 11 kilometers from us, but if you go about 45 kilometers away, there's a world-class gold copper mine owned by Sentara. This is called Comes. And they're looking at a new scenario to move to underground production. This was a former <laughs> world-class open pit mine. There is some existing infrastructure. And uh, for the most part, this is a, a large road, road network uh, that drives uh, right across our property. Uh, there is underground workings um, in one of our largest zones called Cliff Creek. But inevitably, as we work towards this resource and feasibility studies, uh, what we'll see is those underground workings will succumb to a larger open pit. 
So this is probably the best slide to look at uh, Nmap uh, as an introduction to the story. Uh, the map you see here on the left-hand side is um, 140 square kilometer uh, package. This is the first time in uh, well over 30 years where one single company has consolidated the entire package and being able to work on a 20 kilometer trend that goes from corner to corner. Um, and this is already proven in the two years of work that uh, we've, we've planned over the, from 2018 to 2019 and going forward. If you look at the red polygon or red circle, um, these are the resource areas that we're drilling right now. Uh, what you'll see here on this map is a uh, topography that's been draped over with radiometric geophysics. And the radiometrics have been an exceedingly good vectoring tool uh, for geology on this, on this project. The red and orange and even the, the yellow anomalous uh, potassic alteration that you see outlines areas where uh, high temperature fluids have essentially um, pulled up uh, gold and silver from depth right to surface and altered the rocks. And you'll see that also in those other polygons, there's six to seven blue and purple large oval polygons that you see. And these are future development targets that we're, we're bringing forward to the drill ready stage. So at the same time that we're proving out uh, a new resource in the center of the property, there's potential here to develop more ounces in the future with new discoveries. And uh, we see that uh, today with the Marmot Zone, which is just to the south of that red polygon, uh, Marmot is a new discovery for us. We announced that uh, about uh, a month ago in September. Uh, we have five drill uh, holes completed at Marmot. Visually, what we saw at Marmot was um, very comparable to the center of the property with um, gold and silver potential. We have holes sitting at the lab and uh, we hope to see some good numbers. Uh, but increasingly what's become more valuable as a new tertiary or new discovery target is the silver pond clay target just to the west or east of that red polygon. Uh, we've drilled about five drill holes to date. And this is a very, very different mineralization. This is a highly altered clay alteration at surface, which gives indication that it, it's, got a much high, higher um, boiling point, if you will, and indicates that perhaps we're seeing the cap of uh, a nearby porphyry. Uh, we have drill holes sitting at the lab, and uh, we hope to see some uh, interesting numbers here coming back soon. So look, uh, only 90% of this property has been fully explored, or, or, or I should say only 10% has been explored. <laughs> There's still 90% of the property uh, that needs to be drill tested. And that's in those six to seven new tertiary targets that we're looking to drill uh, over the coming years. Uh, but the focus again is in the center. Um, the two new discovery zones uh, that we talked about, Silver Pond and Marmot, drill results pending. Uh, we've got uh, other targets to test in 2021. Uh, this is uh, indeed um, gold and silver bearing property showing mineralization at surface across the entire package. And if you look at the tables there at the bottom, another snapshot um, of some of the, the more prolific or higher grade intercepts that we're seeing. Um, the AGB zone, you'll see there three meters, uh, close to 260 grams gold and well over 3000 grams silver. So these are exceptional numbers, uh, but these large high grade intercepts that you're seeing are bound 
with halos or em enveloped on either side by moderate grade. And that's what lends itself to being open pitable resources. High grade in the center and then moderate grade on either side, um, which creates bulk tonnage for us. Again, you'll see some bigger, longer intercepts on the right side of the table. Um, but we did introduce a number which Malcolm will go into later. Uh, we saw a, um, it was over 50 meters of near uh, three grams. Yeah, 57 uh, meters. 57 meters of just over three grams gold, um, which is, that's a phenomenal number. And we hope to see more num numbers like that as the assay results come back from the lab. And without further ado, I'll pass things over to um, um, our senior geologist, Malcolm, and he'll run through a bit of the geology and uh, the location of our project. All right, so just to direct your attention over to the left side to the image there showing the location of the lawyer's project. Lawyers, again, is up in northeastern British Columbia. And where you see it located is within that green band of rocks. So that is within what's known as the Stikine terrain. And you'll notice that the Stikine terrain is actually wrapped around that brown section, which is the Bowser Basin sediment. And what you see, what we've laid out here along the margins of the Bowser Basin are a number of the major mines and deposits. So that includes both <clears throat> copper gold porphyry as well as gold deposits and mines. And you'll see that they're laid out going from the west all the way around the Bowser Basin to the east side where we're located. So this is part of what we've termed as the golden horseshoe. So the golden horseshoe just shows this arched shape of the Stikine terrain as it wraps around the Bowser Basin. And with that, we believe that the concept of the Golden Horseshoe more accurately depicts what we see with the potential of Northern British Columbia. So what we see at the Lawyers Project is the same age, same rocks, same alteration, same mineralization as what is seen on the Western side of the Bowser Basin as well. So we see a continuation of that. And we have just as much, if not more potential in the fact that our area has been largely historically overlooked. Uh, if you go over to the right hand image now, you'll see our location in comparison to the gold copper porphyry at Kames. So we're about 45 kilometers northwest of Kames. Important to note that Kames you can actually drive to on a year round road from Prince George. Kames also has a power line that leads up to it. So this gives us some advantages in that we can actually tie into that power line at Kames. And we're currently working on infrastructure upgrades so that we can further develop the road that leads up to lawyers with a plan to make that a year round road as well. So as well, I would just like to point out, you can see the sturdy airstrip, which is on the south side of lawyers. So this was used historically for the mining that was done on the lawyer's property. And we're currently using the airstrip as well as it's in good condition and we use it for exploration during these past couple seasons. All right. So just to note, assays are pending. We're gonna get more assays as well. Currently we've drilled 292 holes. That comes up to about 60,000 meters of a total 100,000 planned meter drill program. Here you can actually see a cross section of the Cliff Creek Zone. So the Cliff Creek Zone extends for over 1.2 kilometers along strike and up to 250 meters vertical depth. And it remains open at depth as well as in all directions. So there's lots of potential that remains within these sections. What we're seeing are broad parallel zones of bulk tonnage mineralization. And of course, within that, like Jim was talking about, we've got that high grade mineralization, all of which is hosted within the hanging wall of these steeply Northwest dipping faults. And something to note as well, we're finding new zones that are being discovered 
within 50 meters of historical underground workings and drilling. So didn't have to go too far to make new discoveries. And some highlights. So if you look at the cross section there, look up to the top right, you'll see highlight one of our 2020 intercepts. This was the one Jim was talking about where we intercepted 3.05 grams per ton of gold equivalent across 57 meters core length. So this was within the Cliff Creek East Zone. And this includes 5.07 grams per ton gold equivalent over 33.53 meters, as well as 10.44 gold equivalent over 12.19 meters. So this just shows the great potential that we have on this project not only in expanding the zones that we do have, but also coming up with further discoveries of new zones. And it's actually important to note at the bottom there, so all of this remains open at depth. Yeah, good, thanks, Malcolm. Um, a, a couple of months ago, uh, we released an exploration target at the Cliff Creek Zone. And this was just a, a, an example uh, using a data, historical data, 2018 drilling and 2019. And our target for that area was up to 1.9 million ounces uh, of gold grading 1.7 grams. Uh, a lot has changed since this result um, or target was put out uh, earlier this year. Um, to note, you know, we're over 60,000 meters of drilling. The bulk of that drilling was focused at this Cliff Creek zone, but that does not include uh, the AGB zone, which is much higher grade, and also the Dukes Ridge to Phoenix zone. So we essentially have three zones uh, that will contribute to a global resource in Q1 of next year. And so this serves as a base to start. And uh, we think uh, there's, there's an opportunity to hit or exceed this number uh, with at surface gold and silver mineralization. A good snapshot of the heart of the property. Uh, you can see the Cliff Creek zone to the west or left hand side of the map there. Uh, just to the east, you'll see uh, the smaller Dukes Ridge to Phoenix zone. And then in the upper right side of the corner there, the AGB, AGB zone. So essentially, this is a, a topographical map that is overlaid with uh, ground magnetic geophysics. And the ground magnetics have been another very good geophysical tool to help target these uh, gold silver bearing structures. And you can see the uh, purple and blue hues that trend in a northwesterly fashion. Um, the depressed areas are, are the uh, internal pit shells that we've developed to help guide where we drill this year. And then within those depressed areas, you see the red uh, mineralized zones uh, running in a um, northwesterly trend, mainly through Cliff Creek, which is the largest zone that we have. Um, and most or the bulk of this mineralization is all within 300 meters of surface. So, um, you know, look, uh, look at those blue and purple hues. Uh, those are all opportunities to expand uh, and find new targets here across the center or heart of the property. Uh, so, you know, a bit of a summary here. Look, the value proposition. We are in the early stages of a secular bull run and there's no better time to invest in a company like Benchmark Metals uh, at the beginning, especially at the beginning when a company has not yet to release uh, a new mineral resource estimate. It's 100% owned, we're located in a proven area, this is a great jurisdiction, it's one of the best places to work, Never mind in the world, but certainly in Canada. Political risk is minimal, uh, you can build and permit a mine in British Columbia. Um, it's a friendly jurisdiction. We're fully, we're fully funded for the next two years. We have some large milestones. We'll be releasing drill results from now right through to January. 
Q1 of next year, we'll have a brand new resource estimate that we're targeting multi-million ounces. That'll be followed by a preliminary economic assessment, which we hope to show that the economics are exceedingly good and that the engineering is relatively uh, straightforward. We've already produced some metallurgical results that I didn't mention, but uh, we're seeing up to 95% recovery on the gold and up to 90% on the silver. And essentially what that metallurgy tells us is that um, it's a fairly standard or relatively uh, straightforward flow sheet in order to recover or pull, pull the gold and silver out of the hosting rock. Uh, on some blue sky potential here, look, we've got um, numerous new targets that we're developing. There's one target in particular, the silver pond target, which is uh, an um, porphyry potential. Um, you know, all of these targets were developing at the same time that we're drilling off uh, a new resource for, uh, a new resource for next year, but that resource remains open. Even after this round of 100,000 meters of drilling, we fully expect uh, the expansion open at depth and open at strike. So uh, there's a resource for next year, but there'll be an updated resource 12 months following that. And uh, look, there's nothing better than uh, investing in a crew of people like myself and Malcolm who have the experience here and have a track record of um, creating wealth for people. And you see that in some of the former companies that we've worked along. And that's a good sort of uh, summary for us. Uh, we'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, please submit them to uh, Jane there if you like uh, via via the uh, portal that she's created. Um, one of the questions I can answer though that uh, we've often seen here is uh, what is the average depth of some of the drilling? And truly, this is shallow, shallow drilling. The average drill hole that we're seeing is under 200 meters. Uh, however, we are drilling some deeper holes this year that will exceed four or 500 meters just to test the uh, ultimate depths of this resource. All right, thank you very much, Kim and Malcolm, for taking us through the presentation. We did have quite a number of questions come in, so let's dive right in. First of all, uh, the first question is from Max. He'd like to start off by congratulating you on completing $50 million in financing. So congratulations on that. Uh, he'd like to know, could you talk a little bit about the major institutional investors, their size, uh, the country, their names, apart from Eric Sprott? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Max. Uh, we have, um, I, I can't directly name all of this institutions that we have coming in. Um, I can mention ASA or Merck Capital. Um, they've contributed um, near 10% ownership of the company. There's two other institutions that have provided exceedingly strong support. What I can say about those two institutions is that they generally do not invest in a company at this stage. They would normally wait until um, an engineering or economic studies completed. So look, these institutions um, are getting on board the benchmark investment scenario. Uh, Eric Sprott is the lead, as mentioned. ASA can, um, or Merck Capital can continues to invest more in the company. And, uh, you know, we're diverging now from an institutional supported company, but also retail. So we're, we're quite excited here. Thank you. The next question is from Douglas. He asks, are the Silver Pond and Murmur Zone discoveries part of the plan for the upcoming PEA and feasibility study? And then we have a related question from Chris asking whether drilling has already started at Silver Pond. Yeah, so um, Silver Pond and Marmot um, have both been drilled. Um, uh, we have uh, core samples that have been sent to the lab. 
uh, at Marmot and we await results. Uh, at Silver Pond, uh, we have drilled um, several holes and we are continuing to drill Silver Pond. There's drilling ongoing. Uh, those two areas will not form part of a resource estimate for next year simply because there's not enough drilling uh, and we don't have assay results and we don't fully understand the structures. But those two zones most certainly will be a focus of drilling in 2021. So uh, I would think it's very feasible that those two target areas could become part of a, um, a resource uh, in future years. Uh, but it's going to take more drilling to complete that work. Got it. Thank you, Jim. Uh, the next question is from Ken. He asks, are there any infrastructure challenges uh, or advantages? Yes, thanks, Ken. So, yeah, we, we've been lucky because this is a, a former producer. So we've been in endowed with um, an area that's already disturbed. And you can see that in the last slide here. You know, there's some large layout areas and roads. Um, the challenges. Well, look, there's always challenges going forward on the, the permitting front, um, but we did upgrade three bridges this year um, with with help of our First Nations as a partnership um, and also some of the local operators contributed towards this. So, you know, we went from um, a minimal tonnage capacity on the bridge, bridges to well over 60 tons. And uh, because there is a footprint and a road network and, a, and an airstrip next by, nearby, I think uh, it's not so much as a challenge, but an advantage that um, we can expand those as we go towards a production decision. Speaking of First Nations, I've got a question here asking, how is the benchmark metals relationship with the First Nations and what portion of the exploration workforce do they make up? So uh, Benchmark signed uh, two First Nations agreements this year. Uh, one was a trilateral agreement, which is quite an achievement to have three First Nations working together. Uh, this involves the Seke, Dene, Quadacha, and Takla Nations. Uh, we also have a second agreement with Taltan Nations. So in total, there's four First Nations uh, we have um, workers from all of these bands uh, involved at site. Um, they're involved in a technical capacity, either um, doing some technical uh, logging um, of some of the core, um, geotechnical logging. They're also involved in core cutting. Uh, they're involved on the drills, um, helping with um, uh you know getting results so we're looking to expand that as we invest and spend more money into the future um we recently went to prince george uh to have a, a trilateral call to give updates um we're quite proud of building this um uh, partnership uh, we are in the First Nations backyard, and uh, look, there's an opportunity here to work with the First Nations, create some uh, employment, and create a real partnership where perhaps um, they can build out some real businesses with Benchmark. Great. It's good to hear the collaboration there, Jim. Um, here's a follow-up question from Ken. He asks, um, based on your uh, target of 5 million ounces, uh, how much time and how much funds would be required to achieve that? And what do you think the probability of achieving the actual target would be? Uh, 5 million ounces is still an achievable potential target for us. Uh, you won't see that 5 million ounces uh, coming in the next five or six months. However, after another round of drilling next year, um, there's a, it's a combination of uh, resources and targets that could get us to that 5 million ounce uh, target. That would involve the heart or center of the property, but also 
um, areas like Marmot and Silver Pond and Marmot East and, you know, these other tertiary targets that we're developing. We believe those are the sources of material uh, bearing gold and silver that will get us to 5 million ounces and beyond. And look, uh, 2021 is not far away and we'll be drilling 200,000 um, meters. Uh, but initially uh, on this next maiden resource, uh, we'd be looking at a multi-million ounce uh, gold silver resource. Mm -hmm. uh, Dirk asks, Actually, is it possible to drill more than 200,000 meters in the next year, especially when the weather is a bit better? I think we're probably uh, stretching the limits. Uh, 200,000 meters could conceivably be the largest drill program in Canada, um, perhaps even North America. So I can say with confidence that um, if we get to this two hundred thousand dollar or two hundred thousand meter mark, we would be within the top three largest drill programs in North America. So uh, I think two hundred thousand meters is a lofty mark as it is, but uh, we can achieve this. Um, uh, I will be starting uh, late winter. Uh, on the program and we'll run right through to November, December of next year. And I would anticipate perhaps seven or eight drill rigs running at the same time. Excellent. And this answers uh, Peter's question about how many drill rigs you'll need as well. Um, speaking of uh, drilling over the winter, um, some of the questions here are asking, uh, would there be a period over the winter break that uh, the site will be shut down? And if so, uh, which months would that be? Yes, indeed. We're, we are in the throes of installing uh, all season type infrastructure. Uh, however, there, there will be a, a shutdown period here uh, simply because we we need time for interpretation and drill results to come back so that we can plan this larger program for next year. So I would anticipate, uh, you know, uh, drilling to stop um, in and around December and January, perhaps even February, but then shortly thereafter, we would initiate and mobilize for drilling again. Uh, but don't let that um show any fear here because we know the labs are slow at generating re, uh, results um it's a busy time right now so i would anticipate drill results would run right through january period and then keep in mind uh two big announcements following that a new resource estimate and then um economic numbers from a preliminary economic assessment so I would not see a dry period where there's no news flow here. I think we're on a path where it's constant news flow virtually 12 months a year for Benchmark. Excellent. And you anticipate the news flow to be uh, one large release or just throughout? Uh... Uh, on the drill results, um, uh, because it's such an excessive amount of drilling that we've completed to date and we'll drill uh, tens of thousands of meters more this year, uh, we'll be releasing results in more of a bundle fashion. So, you know, Cliff Creek is our largest zone, but what we'd like to do is release results that um, explain a sub zone. So perhaps Cliff Creek North, that would include anything from uh, six to perhaps um, a dozen results at once. And that allows us to explain in better context what's happening in the northern or central or southern area of each of those zones. We can talk more about expansion and new mineralization and what its impact will be on the future. Um, the preference there is to do that rather than, uh, you know, the occasional one-off single drill hole because a single drill hole doesn't truly explain what's happening in the larger context with this project. Makes a lot of sense. I hope that answers your question, Jeffrey. Um, the next question is from Robert. He asks, you seem to have an ambitious drill program for a lawyer's project. So what are the meter uh, per meter drilling costs? 
So because we are um, not requiring uh, helicopter support on a 24-7 type basis, um, our drill costs are exceedingly low and they might actually be within uh, the lowest costs uh, in northern British Columbia. Um, approximately uh, the core drilling all in is about $200 a meter. Uh, that would include uh, assay costs. And I'd say the um, RC drilling, which we're, you know, there's two types of drilling here. We have core drilling and RC. The RC drilling is more effective per meter because it's less costly, but the core drilling is required because it gives some exceedingly good geological information just by seeing the core. Uh, in addition, you can use the core towards metallurgical and geotechnical work. So there's a, a, a blend or a mix between RC drilling and core drilling. Uh, the RC drilling is approximately $150 a meter. Now, speaking of drilling costs, Peter would like to know, uh, based on the uh, upcoming drill program and perhaps others in the future, would you consider buying the rigs instead of renting them? Uh, it may be an opportunity for us in the future, um, but because our drill costs are, are quite, uh, quite low, um, you know, for the for the current term working forward, I think we're best to have um, a very qualified uh, drilling services company do that work for us. Uh, but I'll say this much, our team has worked in the past in the Arctic uh, with some successful drill programs. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have owned and controlled our own drill rigs before. So it is it is conceivable, but not a near-term focus. Got it. Our next question is from Andy. Uh, he mentioned uh, that Benchmark has said that the Baker Mill, which is only 11 kilometers distant from the lawyer's project, uh, could there be any synergies to explore uh, working with this mill? There could be. Um, I, I think the the largest synergy would be more that uh you know it's a, a large northwesterly trend uh you know that goes from the kames mine through to the baker mill and then uh towards uh lawyers and beyond um but the mill that's sitting at um, baker is likely not fit for purpose for for benchmark uh, simply because we're looking at um, a much larger scenario of throughput. Um, the Baker Mill was designed for very narrow, high-grade veins and a much smaller throughput. Uh, you know, conceivably, we would be looking at a production scenario that perhaps could be well over 150,000 ounces per year. That's to be determined with a with an economic analysis. Uh, but that would far exceed what's available at Baker. Got it. I've got a couple questions here uh, from Harry and from our Donald. Uh, how many drill meters have been reported on with the essays? Uh, very few. Uh, you know, we've yeah, been, still we're feet. still waiting. Um, I think we've released, uh, there's been two, press releases on drill holes, um, you know, our apologies, but um, it's, a, it's a bit out of our hand right now. We're waiting for these groups of holes to be released so that we can um, speak more openly in subzones of areas. Uh, you know, there's 60,000 meters completed to date. And uh, I would anticipate over the coming weeks that we'll be in a position where we can report uh, perhaps almost every seven to 10 days on batches of drill holes. And that will run right through to January period. Excellent. Um, 
There's some uh, questions here also asking about uh, whether Benchmark is thinking about planning its own production or whether you're thinking about selling the project. And uh, Max specifically asked, you talk about 90% of the area still being unexplored or underexplored. So could you ever sell only the area that's drilled and then keep exploring uh, that 90%? Yeah, those are really good questions, actually, um, because look, everyone's looking for your path or your end line goal going forward. And I can say unequivocally, Benchmark and the management team will work towards uh, completing as many tasks as needed to get this project to a point where shovels are ready to be put in the ground. Uh, this is essential. Um, because, um, you know, it's either an exploration project or it's a mine, and we think we have a mine here. So we're working towards completing the permitting and engineering. However, uh, if a suitor came along during this uh, next uh, one to two years as we produce milestones uh, that created um, wealth uh, towards uh, shareholders, we would take it, you know, it's all about uh, generating wealth for the investor. If there's a premium offered from a good suitor, then yes, of course we would take it. There's a bit of a balance to um, understand where you are in this cycle, um, but we will work towards production. If a suitor comes along with an attractive offer that where shareholders are rewarded, yes, definitely. Uh, on the answer of um, the package, uh, perhaps there's an opportunity to joint venture some of the ground, but uh, I think the immediate opportunity here for Benchmark is to work the entire package, develop as many ounces as we can across, across the 20 kilometer trend. And I think that is what makes this more attractive for a suitor if they came along. The fact that this is 140 square kilometers of, a, of ground that has anomalous gold and silver across the entire trend. That is what makes, um, you know, a, a mid-tier or world-class uh, gold and silver miner become attractive to this company. That's great. Now, speaking of buying and selling of property, Max has noted that Gold Plus Mining has actually bought property right beneath Benchmark. So can you talk a little bit about why you chose not to buy this property? Yeah, look, there's, you know, there's been tremendous success with Benchmark uh, and with the Kames mine nearby. And the turn of a cycle here, it's a secular gold and silver bull run. Uh, there's been a, a lot of activity with um, other companies and operators staking ground and advancing their properties nearby to us, um, which is fantastic. Uh, there's nothing better than being a, a headlining company in an area of play. Uh, but the, the real story here is we have 140 square kilometers. Uh, it's going to take years to exhaust the potential at Benchmark. Um, so the reality is added more ground to this package just um, means more do dollars spent on working on more tertiary targets. We have numerous targets across our package. It's going to take years to develop those never mind the immediate resource potential in the center. So, uh, you know, we've got our hands full with where the package is and the ground that we have now. So thinking about all the potential that uh, we have in the future, do you think that Benchmark could be the next great bear? I certainly hope so. We'd love to see that market cap come along and really it is, it is uh, an achievable target here. Amazing. Uh, the next question is from Ken. He'd like to know a little bit more information about uh, the Metals Group. Sure. So, look, Metals Group is uh, uh, we've taken uh, an, an umbrella called the Metals Group, and there are several companies sitting underneath the Metals banner. 
This allows us to hire uh, and utilize people like myself and uh, Malcolm, uh, where we can share talent across all the companies. And it, it, it really, it allows us to keep our GNA lower and um, keep our geologists and our financial and our marketing types uh, active across all companies uh, and have some synergy where, you know, when one company gets moving, moving like ben, Benchmark, well, interest spins over to the others. So uh, some of the names under the group is Altaplano Metals. Um, that's headed by um, our, our trusted colleague, Alistair. Uh, Altaplano is a small uh, but growing copper gold producer in Chile. Uh, one of the newest companies to our fold is called Cordis Metals and Cordis is headed by Sean Major. Sean is also a director and CFO at Benchmark, um, but the bulk of his time now is going towards this new gold silver explorer in Nevada. Um, we've also got a number of other um, uh, companies in the fold that we're vetting projects for. So keep your eye out on the metals group because um, there's no better time to get involved in a company when it's just, uh, just begun. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I actually do think that is all the time we have for questions today. We're coming to the end of our time together. First off, I want to thank everyone that submitted questions in the Q&A panel. And also thank you, Jim and Malcolm, for taking us through the presentation and answering all the questions that we have. If we did not get a chance to answer your questions today, or if you think of a new question after the end of this summit, please do reach out to Benchmark Metals at info at benchmarkmetals.com or reach out directly to Jim. Uh, his contact details and uh, some of the contact details of other members of the team are on screen there. A copy of this presentation is going to be uploaded to the Benchmark Metals website at www.benchmarkmetals.com. So uh, this is how you can get more information. Uh, there's also a short survey you'll be redirected to after the end of this summit. Please let us know how we did and leave your details if you want management to reach out directly to you. Now I'm gonna hand it back over to you guys, Jim and Malcolm for the final word. Good, thanks Jane and thanks all for um for logging in to hear this presentation. And, you know, as you know, the moral of the story here is this is um, an emerging company with big results to come. And uh, there's some comparables to us that we think we will reach here in terms of uh, market cap. So there is still an extreme amount of wealth that can be generated out of this company, especially with, uh, you know, $50 million sitting in the tre treasury and two years of a uh, fully planned uh, drill program and studies with economic numbers to come. All right, thank, thank you. you everyone. Bye, take care. Thanks.